We're good. We're live. Yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. Thanks for joining us on uh, Sylvia Findings, the Wednesday morning live stream. I know I keep saying morning. And if you're pretty much anywhere except <laughs> British Columbia, uh, <laughs> it's not morning anymore. But too bad. I'm. It's my morning, so <laughs> I'm thinking morning. <laughs> um, we do this uh, every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific and extrapolate it out to whatever time zone you're in. Uh, to, you know, keep connected with our customers because, um, you know, the live shows, the uh, uh, trade shows, gem shows, mineral shows, club shows are all <laughs> not happening <laughs> because of the pandemic. Uh, I pretty, hope, hopefully, hopefully, and I'm hoping by the end of the year, although uh, it just keeps going later and later and people keep, uh, you know, promoters keep canceling their shows so we'll see as uh, we've been saying around here uh, lately uh, you know the new normal is <laughs> is the normal now uh, thing I think the old normal is not coming back but um, we'll do what we can hopefully we can keep connected with you guys uh, enough uh, I know you love us no matter what <laughs> whether you see us in person or just uh, on the website but the website can be impersonal and cold sometimes um, and, uh, you know, we like to have that connection with you guys. Um, my name is Mark. I'll be your live streamer today, um, as always. Uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit about um, charms that we carry. Of course, Sylvia Findings, we're the premier um, supplier of sterling silver findings for... Lapidarists, lapidaries, lapidaries, <laughs> jewelers, uh, hobbyists, you name it. They know uh, uh, pendants like crazy all day long, rings forever. Uh, but not just pendants and rings, you know, for setting stones. Um, we also have finished chains, chains in bulk, uh, beads, wire, sheet metal. Boy, you name it. We have it. Uh, and I'm sure tons of stuff that I'm, you know, not remembering off the top of my head. Um, and, uh, you know, we just, uh, if you look at some of the other, I should think you can find them on YouTube, the previous live streams to um, see a lot of the different, you know, product lines that we carry. Um, and we're just trying to showcase uh, a new one every week, um, trying to keep these uh, streams not overly long, although I have a hard time with that because I tend to <laughs> ramble on sometimes when I, once I get going. Um, last week when I said what we'd be doing this week, I said we'll be doing probably charms and connectors. Um, but looking at the, just when I was pulling stuff, for, you know, for the stream, uh, realizing that there's way too many uh, if I tried to cover both of those uh, categories. So we're going to do uh, charms this week and we'll do connectors next week because there's tons of really cool things that you can do with connectors and I uh, I don't want to gloss over that oh look at these cool things uh, without you know trying to explain the myriad ways you could use them um, in your jewelry uh, making uh, of course if you have any questions or comments concerns criticisms any other C things I could think of I love the alliterations uh, please uh, jump into the chat and um, I guess you're already in the chat. I guess that's if you're here, there's a chat box there. You can, you know, uh, enter a comment. Uh, so please enter a comment uh, or just a smile, a wave. Hi. Uh, we like to know that you're here. Uh, if you share this stream, we'll send you uh, one of these free polishing cloths. These are just um, regular old, uh, oh, they're not regular old, they're <laughs> the usual. Uh, jewelry polishing cloth, the chamois material, uh, infused with a chemical that helps remove the cupric oxide, which is the fancy name for tarnish, uh, from the surface of your metal. Helps unbind the copper and the oxygen. Um, and you can use these things until they're completely black. And even though you could probably keep using them for a little while, just don't ever wash them. <laughs> Because if you throw this in the washing machine and try to wash it, you'll remove all of the <laughs> the chemical that helps polishing the uh, material. I think so. Uh, I know uh, jewelers have so many things. Have you ever noticed 
every Jewter I've ever met, their fingers are a mess. <laughs> they're always dirty and their nails are all broken and they probably have gouges and scrapes and burns and stuff on them. Uh, that's how you know a good Jewter, when their hands are a mess. Uh, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Um, just a few housekeeping uh, things. Uh, um, the state of shipping has not improved uh, considerably. It's a little better in Canada, although just today uh, we had a customer um, asking about a shipment that they ordered on the 14th, and today's the 26th. And when I checked, because Canada Post does this really super annoying thing where when you ship a parcel from, say, British Columbia to Ontario, uh, once it leaves the postal processing center in British Columbia, they don't scan it again until it actually gets to the destination post office. Or if they do scan it somewhere in the sorting facility or whatever, uh, it doesn't show up in the tracking information. So, you know, uh, if we ship something on, say, the first of them, or in this case, it was the 14th we shipped it, uh, it says, you know, shipment on the way, um, you know, and then uh, I think on the 17th, it said item has left the British Columbia sorting facility. And then there was nothing again until this morning when it said it's arrived in Barrie, Ontario, which is the destination city. So even though I know it went through at least one other facility uh, between uh, the Richmond plant here and the <laughs> Barrie, Ontario plant uh, sorting facility, uh, it doesn't show up in the... In the um, in the tracking so it's kind of annoying it's kind of it makes people anxious you know where's my baggage is it lost you know the thing and stuff and and the vast majority of instances is not lost it's just that um they're super overwhelmed i guess uh between people you know postal employees you know being quarantined and the volumes being so much higher because everybody's ordering stuff from amazon or whatever or or, uh, or us you know or wherever um nobody's actually shopping in the brick and mortar stores which i hope hopefully that happens again soon because uh boy you need that for a functioning uh, economy but uh, <laughs> that's not why you're here uh, to hear my critique about uh, the state of the world um so yes shipping is still kind of bad um I can't say it's much better if you're shipping overseas. You're still looking at, uh, you got to count on at least a month if we're shipping uh, via post to um, Europe or, you know, wherever. Um, you can always use the um, DHL service that we have on the website now. Um, you know, that'll get you there in, you know, three days, I think, is the average for uh uh, most of Europe, if you're shipping there, or Australia, Japan, you know, wherever. Um, the problem with that, it's not really a problem, but the issue with that is that it, it, obviously it costs more. Uh, um, and they'll charge you for brokerage, whereas if a postal shipment, they won't charge you for brokerage and import duty fees. Uh, but DHL will. They'll charge you like 12 or $15, I think, uh, for that. So just be aware of that when you're ordering. Um you know, obviously, you know, we do our best to ship every order uh, the same day we get it. You know, sometimes um, if there are issues, it'll be the next day. But I would say 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time, uh, we ship orders the same day we get them. As long as it's during business hours. You know, if, uh, you know, we close here at 5.30 uh, Pacific time. So if you uh, order something at, uh, you know, 5.45, <laughs> it's not shipping today. Uh, it's shipping tomorrow because I'm already gone. Um, our shippers close at 6 p.m., so we have to bring all of our parcels down there um, to have them, you know, put them into the system. So, um, like that. Uh, again, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, please, uh, you know, join us in the chat, say hi or, or, or not. Um, another note, I'm going to harp on this every uh, time, but uh, we always have questions. Um Every week, almost every day now, it seems like, well, maybe not every day, most days, every other day at least, let's say, uh, for custom work. You know, well, I've got a stone that's, uh, you know, 17.5 millimeters by, you know, 23.5 millimeters and none of your settings will fit. Can you, you know, 
the answer to whatever that question is going to be is almost always, yeah, we can do whatever we want. You know, uh, we're the factory. <laughs> um, we have the capability to do uh, custom work. So um, when you're on the website, just look at the, uh, it's one of the only menu bar selections that's uh, in gold, DIY jewelry. Look at that and look at the DIY custom made jewelry. All the information is there. Um, and it's a hell of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and say that out loud. It's a really amazing deal. $65 or $70, I think. 65, is it? 65. Uh, for silver, for obviously, for sterling or gold is obviously more. But, um, you know, sterling silver, $65 for just about anything up to five grams. Um, you know, obviously, if it's some crazy elaborate piece that has to be cast in multiple parts and then soldered together, there's more labor involved. So. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if you have uh, an idea, a concept, uh, you can draw it. It doesn't even have to be very good drawing. You know, my drawing is terrible, but these designers are awesome, and they always, uh, you know, manage to extrapolate from what we're uh, sending them. Um, you know, they always come up with really, really great stuff. Um, and maybe I can talk about that one whole session. I think show you yeah, we have, some uh, things. Ten custom mail orders coming in the end of this shipment. Oh, nice! Ten. So I guess in the next shipment we have ten custom -made custom made orders, orders coming in, um, and if they're not here physically here when we do a live stream, I'll at very the very least take pictures and and, thing and show them to you guys. Uh, you know what we can do. You know, just do. Uh, there's always a way. No matter what. The customer reply you deliver already. You reply oh, it. good. Yo, so that customer <laughs> I was talking about who was having trouble, I guess her <laughs> shipping was delivered. You see, I can't post. They need to have, you know who's the best uh, uh, company as far as tracking goes is FedEx. If you've ever shipped something by FedEx, every time, if it moves from one side of the truck to another, they scan it and it shows up on the thing. You know, the driver moved it three feet. You know, it's okay, great. <laughs> Good to know. When am I getting it? Um, but yeah, that's one thing that's always impressed me about FedEx is how amazing their tracking is. Uh, but there's a reason why you pay that much for FedEx, I guess, is to get that tracking information. Anyway, um, Enough about all that. Uh, let me get into what we're talking about today. Uh, I think you see, I've already gone 12 minutes and I haven't even shown you one thing yet. <laughs> oh boy. I thought, you know, let me try to keep this under an hour. Maybe let's do 45 minutes or so, but I feel like, again, we're going to end up going long. Uh, but I'm going to try. Maybe I'm not going to show you everything, uh, obviously, because there's too many, too many charms. Um, and, uh, you know, the difference between, like, a charm and a connector is, uh, it can be subtle. And sometimes you can use connectors as charms and charms as connectors, I guess, depending how you, uh, uh, you know, how, how <sighs> creative you want to get with how to use the pieces. But generally, as far as we're concerned, uh, you know, a charm is something that has a, a loop that you're going to dangle from something. So it's something cute or... or, or scary or uh, beautiful you know they're always beautiful right no matter what even if they're scary scary beautiful um, I'm gonna show you one in a minute that to me is scary but beautiful scary um, but you know a charm so something like this right it's cute little lock and key right charm set. It's just a loop in the top of that, and I got this. I thought I was going to be clever and remove the uh, <laughs> remove the the caps from the the bottles. But uh, anyway, this is LE three fifty one. Is that uh, the skew for that cute little thing? And uh, I double checked uh, with the second one, and if you try with two, the key from one uh, doesn't actually fit in the hole in, in the hole. So. <laughs> It's somebody else's key. <laughs> it's, somebody, it's somebody else's key. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there are some there are some lock there are some locks lever can be opened. That's right. Oh man, how's that? You see, now you're getting romantic advice from uh, the live stream here. There are some locks that cannot be opened. <laughs> so, um, or. 
something something like this. Uh, right here's a quintessential charm, something you'd find on uh, you know any charm bracelet. You know that lovely um, little elephant. L E four seven zero is the skew of that 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 thing. Uh, and I'm not going to read the prices because. Um, you know, silver's just gone. I didn't really talk about that. Uh, silver's gone up. Um, I think when I was looking yesterday, it was like it had been up like 62% in the past two months. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so, you know, uh, the margins are already pretty small on sterling. So we had to update some of the prices. These charms, I think, have gone up probably 25 or 30%. Um, uh, you know, average. So I don't want to read the prices because they'll be wrong. You know, I don't want to give you wrong information. But uh, um, anyway, so, you know, to me, that's a charm, right? Something, you know, with a loop that you're going to dangle off a chain or a, a necklace or a thing or something, something that you're going to dangle off something else. Uh, connector. Uh, yeah. Me. Uh, you can tell audience before we adjust the price. The customer still can order that those items on the website or come to the office to buy at the previous price until we adjust the price. Oh, nice. Yeah. So um, I guess until the prices have been updated, um, if you buy, you know, whatever you buy online, if we haven't updated the prices on the website or thing, you can get them at the old price until they're, I think, as long as they're still there. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, a connector is something like this where, um, I mean, this is obviously a connector, gorgeous, you know, chandelier kind of earring piece. When I look at that, I think of that kind of thing. Well, you can use it as a, you know, as a necklace connector, uh, you know, statement piece down at the bottom. Uh, you can imagine this at the bottom of a necklace with a bunch of things dangling off the end of that, right? Uh, or something as simple as that, you know, right? With a loop at you know, both ends, this lovely little bow thing, <laughs> uh, right? Lovely little bow with a loop at both ends. So that, you know, to um, connect things to other things, that's why we call it a connector uh, instead of a charm. Although uh, with um, either of those things, or probably more with the bow one, but you could just snip one of the loops off and have it dangling off and have that be a charm. Or dangle a bead, you know, put a head pin with a loop in the end of that, off the end of a bead, and hang a bead off the end of that, um, you know. But it's a subtle difference, but it's a big of enough difference that um, I'm going to keep them uh, separate. Because if I tried to do all, it, it would be too much. We would be here uh, literally all day, um, <laughs> which I'm sure you're pretty much already sick of me now by now. So, uh, thing. let me... Uh, Show you one. Here's one of those things that I thought was uh, scary but beautiful, right? This, uh, you know, bird skull charm with a flower in the top of that, kind of a plumeria flower motif in the top there, right? The loop. This uh, skew of this is uh, LE452. And um, We've got a couple of charms in that vein, you know, that kind of a <laughs> animal vein. Uh, here's a lovely rhinoceros oh, head. <laughs> That's a big charm. Uh, this one is a LE492. Um, it's a heavy one too. Just, gosh, pretty sturdy. You know, it's hollow, but it's still, you know, pretty uh, voluminous to make it pretty heavy. Um, here's another. I thought I'd be clever by taking the, uh, oh yeah, those. I thought I'd be clever by taking the, uh, the lids off, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Here's another. This is so awesome, right? If you're into that kind of macabre, um, you know, sensibility, right? It's a lovely skeletal hand with some bones and stuff on there. God, I love that. You know, um, obviously not everyone's taste, but the people who have this taste think this is delicious. 
uh, LE486 is that super, God, I love that <laughs> charm. Clearly, that was made after my taste. Here's a, another one. It's a skull head. God, I love that. Right? Nice big. I had an idea that I was going to buy one of these and saw the, the back of the head off and then solder it onto a ring shank and set some stones on the eyeballs. Marvel, I think we should make a ring with a skull <laughs> to set stones and two yeah, stones in the eyeballs. Yeah, the two eyes, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. That would be so cool. That's a good idea. Yes, I am that. I So that is uh, LE488 on that... Uh, that um, LE488. Yeah, so here's another bird. Although this is probably more, a, this is a definitely a connector. So you'll probably see this again next week, another bird skull. I love this uh, thing. Uh, LE483. Um, and where is... <laughs> and there's this one, which I previewed last week, which this is my favorite charm of all of them. This <laughs> awesome... I don't know what it is, animal, skull, but they're articulated. They, I like to think of it as like a dinosaur, but uh, or a dragon, a dragon skull with the articulated um, <laughs> jaw. Um, and that one, the skew for that is LE487. I love that charm. Uh, also, as far as like articulated charms uh, go, uh, another one of my favorites is this um, turtle charm with the uh, you know the the legs and the tail and the and the head are all articulated, right? This um, thing has to be cast in. Uh, let me look at it. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces, uh, and then assembled, um, you know, by. Uh, a jeweler and solder together. Um, and there's an artist uh, out there that um, his name is Robert Burkett or Bob Burkett. You can uh, you can Google him, look him up. Um, he makes um, you know something similar. They're a little bit bigger. Uh, he makes them with uh, casts them in shibuichi, which is a uh, Japanese alloy of. Uh, it's copper and silver, but it's like 70% copper, 30% silver. I think off the top of my head, I'm probably wrong. Don't quote me on that. But it's an alloy of copper and silver, and it looks very red, the metal. Uh, but it's really lustrous and gorgeous. And um, and he, I think he charges something like three or $400 for the the uh, sea turtle castings that he have. Again, they're a little bit bigger, uh, but it's the same idea, right? All these uh, pieces are articulated. Super difficult, um, you know, charm to construct. Um, but uh, did I give the code? LE062 is this one. And uh, golly, I love that charm. So, um, here's a, another charm. And again, a lot of these charms have bales, right? But uh, if you're putting these on a charm bracelet, um, you could just snip the bail off, and there, there's always a loop attached to it that you can, uh, you know, attach to the uh, charm bracelet, right? It's lovely three-dimensional bird, eagle, taking flight. Maybe it's about to land and jump on a fish <laughs> that's in a stream somewhere. And, uh, oh, here's, here's another one. <laughs> lovely ram uh, skull. Thing with that stuff. Okay, I think I'm gonna enough with the macabre stuff here. The rest are all gonna be happy, beautiful, cute little things. This super little flower charm, LE373. I don't know if you can see the texture on that, but just lovely. Now, all of these charms, well, I don't know, all, most of these charms are always going to have a loop attached to them, uh, 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 attached to 
or I should say there's, there'll be a, a solder jump ring attached to the loop. Usually they're soldered. Um, and you can always, right, so there's a loop that's that's cast as part of the, uh, you know, this uh, the horse. But there's also a jump ring attached to that thing. I don't know if you can see, maybe if I put it upside down, you can see that, right, the extra loop there. That's the loop that you would connect it to a charm bracelet with. Lovely. Hopping stallion. There. Um, Here's a great big elephant, right? Hollow, solder, you know, two pieces soldered together uh, to create that charm. Have you noticed, I don't know if you've ever noticed, um, any time you see, especially in jewelry, um, elephant carvings, charms, things like that, the uh, trunk uh, is always pointing up, it has to be pointing up, that's uh, good luck. If the charm is pointing, if the trunk is pointing down, uh, it's considered bad luck in many cultures. Um, that's why they're always pointing up. It's good luck. Bring you good luck. Right? Learn something new every day. Uh, here's another kind of like that lock and key chain. Um, Oh, just camp on that, right? Just a couple of uh, leaves, right? It's a maple leaf, I think. And this, and the the words say, um, "Turn over a new leaf," right? <laughs> so, I guess maybe it should be like that with the smaller one in front. And the bigger one behind. Turn over a new leaf. That's a great charm. Double charm. That's a LE438. Use the skew for that one. Nice. Um, here's <laughs> it's kind of like a little kitty, a little uh, kitty bell. You know, have you ever seen those clocks where the, the tail, you know, wags and the eyeballs, you know, uh, go back and forth, little kitty uh, clocks? That's what this reminds me of. It's uh, uh, this cat bring money. Oh, it's this cat, mm -hmm. cat, cat brings money. Yeah, from Japan, I think Japan story, Japanese story. There's, uh, anyway, some, looks like kanji uh, on there. So if you can read that, let us know what it means in the comments, unless it means something bad. I don't think it would. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, you're destined to live in the hell of boiling oil. I don't know. Um, but, and it, uh, you know, jingles too, so I don't know if you can hear that over the thing, but it's making a cute little jingling sound. Um, of course, lots of fishy kind of charms thing, right? It's a great big goldfish charm. That one, uh, LE441 is your stuff. I love this one because um, the silver is very matte. You know, it's like um, uh, Boy, I don't know. There's a couple ways you can get that effect, and I'm not sure how they did it on this because there are some sections of this that are shiny, polished uh, spots on there, kind of thing. Um, but cute, super cute little snake charm, right? That's uh, LE403 is your total. And this is, uh, even though it's, it's kind of big, um, uh, it's hollow, so it's also, you know, pretty light. Really nice. And very cool effect uh, on that thing. Of course, we have uh, coins, coinish charms, I guess. Um, this one is uh, 
I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong. Igdrasil, <laughs> the tree of life, right? Um, the little charm, the thing, and that other kind of a, I don't know if that's kind of a Celtic pattern on the back, but that's definitely the tree of life. With that, no, that's Molnir on the bottom of that. And um, just, a, look, just so you get an idea of how over the top, you know, extravagant. Oh, that's a connector because it's a loop in the bottom. Ah! Well, I'll show it to you now. You can see it again next week. Um, you can use this sideways or uh, you know, you know, straight up and down. Uh, looks like a, a fox, right? With that um, marcasite. You know, stones, the pave effect. Golly, that's really cool. I don't think I've ever seen this one uh, out of the jar. And it looks different when you're looking at it in the jar. But when you look at it like this, man, I can think of like a million ways to use this uh, thing in a necklace. Very cool. So that fox is CN201. I should have known by that thing. That this, uh, uh, as far as feather charms uh we have so many this one cn229 i'm going to show you this even though what you can't see under my thumb is that oh there's another loop there so it's actually a connector but you can cut that loop off and uh, dangle that as a charm right um there's that one and we've got Another one, like that, nice wide one with some, uh, yeah, very cool. There's some, uh, you know, like um, when you see feathers that are all pristine, right, is so, I don't know, seems so uh, not real. Whereas these are, it looks, it looks more, uh, I guess, accurate as far as the gaps between the uh, golly, I don't know the word for the little pieces in between the quills, in between the, uh, um, you know, the little fronds that come off the edge of the, the or the side of the feather. And here's another feather charm, cute little pointy one. LE423 is this one. Um, I know there are more. But they weren't in the same um, in the same tray as those others, and I'll probably come across them a little bit later. Here's another uh, turtle charm. Right, this is a little bit off center. Right, that lovely sea turtle thing. This is a hollow one, all one piece, uh, and there's a bunch of symbols on there. I don't know if this is that. Uh, the that turtle that's what is the name of that turtle that carries the universe on his back or carries the world on its back kind of like a a, a different uh, version of the flat earthers right you believe that the world is being carried by a turtle well we have a charm to commemorate that uh, here's a I'm going to show you two, actually, in this sort of series. This is like that uh, other snake charm. Right? A little, looks like a little Scotty dog, maybe. Maybe his ears are a little too floppy for a Scotty dog. But, uh, again, hollow with that uh, very cool matte finish on the outside. This one is LE404. And I know there is, where is it? I think there's a cat too somewhere. It's, it's not this one, but this one. Cat lovers are going to love this one. Actually, I, I made my sister a necklace with this. She's a cat lover. Not one of those crazy cat ladies, because she only has one, but um, 
<laughs> she loves her cat. Uh, this, uh, if you could see that, there's like uh, the cat's wearing a necklace of cubic zirconias. Very cute. Again, hollow, so it's not super heavy. Uh, air gold, not super expensive. This one, LE227, is your code number for that. Uh, oh, going back to the animal motif. There's one. Uh, I don't know if that's the neck is neck is not long enough to be a giraffe. So I guess it's a horse, but spotted horse. Yeah, it's a horse. I mean, it's a horse, not a zebra because it's not stripes. But uh, very cute. Again, hollow. Nice big thick one. Charm. Um. So if you're into equestrian sports, that's a great addition to your thing. I'm going to show you a couple of charms in a row now. Um, here's a, a foot, right? The customer can stand the no-go or right. other things on it. So this and the next two I'm going to show you also are all the same basic concept. Um, you can, uh, if you know somebody, you can engrave, you know, something. Uh, you can just, you know, engrave, I don't know, uh, something on there. A birthday, uh, anniversary, a beach trip. Right. Here's a lovely heart charm. I think, oh, I didn't get I think that little. The foot is... LE467, and this one, this heart uh, charm, LE4466. Four, six, six. Uh, and again, great for uh, thing. And you know what? Um, you can go uh, many malls, if you could still find a mall that's still <laughs> open. <laughs> Uh, they have little, these little kiosks, and every once in a while you'll find a kiosk that does, um, you know, they'll photograph your face onto a mug, or um, they'll uh, thing, and a lot of those also will engrave uh, keychains and stuff. You can bring them this um, and make them engrave something on here. They're going to charge you for it, <laughs> because you're not buying their tchotchkes. Um, to do the engraving on, but uh, here's a cute little flower, LE017, right, nice little daisy flower, dangle, uh, again, specifically made, uh, although I guess you don't really have to, but they're, the, the, the concept of those is to uh, definitely for engraving your own. Here's a cute little, oh, that's a tiny one. Cute little owl. Oh. Who, you say? I, I don't know who. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a terrible joke. LE463 is the uh, code of that. If you could see the texture on that. Probably it's a shame I can't get this closer. The perils of using a camera phone is that uh, I feel like you can never get close enough for it to stay in focus. Anyway, that's very cute. Um, little owl. Of course, charms don't have to be a thing. They can just be a thing. <laughs> like this. It's just a little square, you know, uh, rod, I'm sure... Um, in some cultures, this has some significance, um, but I just think it's cool. LE454 is the code of that. Right, just a little square post. I guess if your engraving is really good, you could probably engrave something on that, uh, on that post. Kind of tiny, but gosh, it's at least a millimeter and a half across. Uh, here's another great one. Very specific. 
<laughs> right? Figure skater. Figure skater. Well, I guess he can almost probably get away with a uh, hockey player too. Uh, although hockey players don't normally have that uh, that heel on their skates. So, yeah, figure skater. Um Probably figure skaters wear more charm bracelets than hockey players do. Uh, golly, that was gender specific. And <laughs> so I'm going to take that back and say, boy, lots of hockey players would love to have that on their charm bracelets. All right, nice and hollow. Very cute. That skate is LE230. Is the code of that. I feel like I'm sticking too far on one on one tray. And here's a nice cute little leaping dolphin L E three ninety three. Right? So is he kinda of getting uh, the idea that you know there isn't really um, a subgenre of charms that we don't have things for. Um, oh, golly, here's another. Oh, that's a connector. Never mind. Here... Oh, wow. Here's a cool one. Come on, change. There we go. So here's a, it's like a tube, right? The bale is like a tube, I mean. Um, then you can put your chain through, and then there's two uh, crowns, I guess, for the king and the queen, if you're the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, how about you? <laughs> if you have a dream of being a royal family, I actually know somebody, uh, a very lovely guy who calls his wife my queen. Not going to say who that is, not important. Um, but you know him, you love him. Uh, here's another lovely. Uh, I just, uh, it's always amusing to me when she calls him on her his phone and his phone lights up, my queen. I like that. LE513 is the uh, skew for this lovely charm with these uh, laurel leaves, I guess, if it's uh, victorious, victory, victory, right? <laughs> if you're victorious over something, that's a great charm to put on your charm bracelet or dangle off something. Here's another one of uh, Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life. Um, although the, the roots are totally visible, I don't know if you can see that from there, but they're totally visible on the charm sort of thing. Very cool. Nice open, uh, you know, structure. So, uh, you can see lots of light through there. Look, thing LE514 on that charm. Um... There's one that, oh God, I love this. I'm a sucker for tassels, so uh, it's just a charm, uh, you know, almost like a cap with um, these chains dangling from there, right? How awesome is that tassel? LE522 is your skew for that. So, okay. <laughs> I could spend looking too much time looking at that. Um, here's another that same idea, a little different cap, a little bit shorter chains, uh, but awesome. Uh, boy, in this kind of thing, I always like, uh, you know, uh, and I'm probably going to keep these out for next week because when I show you things to do. Um, with connectors, right? If you have a, you know, an ear wire, you can string a, you know, have a, get an eye pin, put a bead on there, put a loop in the other end, put the connector on, and then dangle something like this off the other end. You've got these gorgeous, you know, 
big, beautiful earrings um, with almost no effort. You know, just just putting a few things together. You know, uh, this is more for next week. But it's actually kind of amazing when you think about how many different ways you can use any one piece. Um, you know, for whatever you're doing. Uh, except these. These are just for dangles. Lovely lotus flower blossom. There. I don't know if you can see the detail on that. Looks like it's a little too light. But that's on the lotus blossom. LE528 is the skew of that. Um, here's another tree. This is not the legendary tree of life. That's just a tree, but very cute. Arbor Day, maybe? <laughs> or if you have a, somebody who's a botanist, you can get them that little charm, right? Something to add to the charm bracelet. Or if you plant a tree... Which you should do. Just because. Um, here's one that I love this. It's um it's just a whoops, a wing charm. Right? So it's just a wing. Um boy and wings can be representative of so many things. I know there's a jeweler in um, um, Bainbridge Island, Washington, named Sherry Eckert. You should look her up. Uh, she makes tons of jewelry with um, wings. Uh, if you want to get some ideas. Uh, oh, here's the tray that I was looking for before when I had those feathers. There's a lot more feathers in here. Uh, and I'm going to show you a, a couple of them anyway, not all of them, but uh, right, so it's another charm. This one, LE433, is a charm with uh, feathers. Again, a little more um, uh, technically accurate with the uh, uh, parts of the quills you know, pulled open. Um, I think I read somewhere that in, and I've never actually tried it, but uh, in most feathers you can, if you find them with the quills pulled open like this, if you start from, you know, the top and just uh, pinch these in between your finger and pull down, uh, you can get those pieces to snap back together almost like a zipper. Um, LE469 is the code of that. Um... Almost gone. God, getting on 50 minutes. Okay, we can we can speed this up. Um, this, I think, is far and away our best-selling feather charm. That one, that lovely, it's a good-sized, good length, maybe, um, I don't know, an inch long or so. 33 millimeters long. Is that that thing? Uh, you know, so it's a good size, not super big, uh, obtrusive. Uh, you can dangle that off an ear wire uh, with a bunch of other things. You can dangle it off a charm bracelet. Um, it's antiqued, so you can really see the detail uh, on there. That uh, LE257 is your uh, the code number. Um, and I don't know. Personally, I feel like we've sold more of that particular... Uh, feather than all the rest of them, you know, uh, probably combined. Um, leaves, golly, so many. This lovely, you know, texture, right? Leaf, kind of a uh, very simple, you know, charm. LE414 is the code number of that, and I love that. Um, you know, the texture is kind of exaggerated, but 
man, you obviously know it's a leaf. That shape you can, you know, get away with putting just about anything on there. But uh, and here's another one, a little more detail, a little shinier, a little more antiqued, right? Nice stylized leaf. Who doesn't love those leaves? It's kind of like a you almost have to have one of those on a charm bracelet. No, I guess you don't have to, but. Um, There are more leaves. I know there are more leaves. I don't want to go trying to speed up again at the end. Here's a gorgeous starfish thing. I don't know if you could see really well the texture on that, uh, but that uh, I've played with many starfish as an avid scuba diver, so I can tell you that that's uh, you know pretty uh, pretty accurate as far as how that particular sea star uh, looks. Obviously, there are other ones that have way more arms. Um, <laughs> that are way more frightening. Uh, you know, my favorite thing to do, as, not important, as a scuba diver, is to put uh, sea stars on top of um, um, what are those, uh, like uh, scallops, because um, when the scallops are they're normally just sitting on the bottom of the thing, and when the sea star comes on them and, and starts, you know, grabbing them because it'll push it into its mouth and it'll digest it, uh, the mollusk will stick its leg out, like a leg, that will just go, you know, it's really bizarre if you've never seen it. <laughs> That's something if you want to go down some crazy uh, YouTube rabbit hole of undersea life, neither here nor there. Here's a gorgeous... <laughs> Clamshell. Um, you know, I, I don't know what you would want to do with this, uh, but if I could make a suggestion, if it were me, I would probably pry that open and, um, you know, stick a pearl in there and then pinch it back closed so that it's held in place, you know, so it could move around. Maybe it might even uh, jingle a little bit. Uh, but golly, that would be cool. Or just as it is. LE-477 is that lovely clamshell. Uh, and that's all one piece, right? So um, I know, was it last week? Two weeks ago? No, last week when we were doing the pearls. Uh, I showed you that one charm, that pendant that we have, um, where the two pieces open and, you know, reveals the, you know, the inside. Um, that one doesn't open. Here's lovely big charm, flowery of uh, leafy motif with um, I don't know some very cool organic looking <laughs> thing. There. Uh, I don't know if you can see the texture on there. Some of the the leaves are you know nice and smooth and shiny, and others have this uh, almost like uh, granulation texture on them. Nothing. It's not true granulation because that's you know part of the casting, and the dots uh, on the piece underneath are just little indentations. Um, true granulation is pretty rare to find because it's so super labor intensive. You actually have to melt all of the dots first, and then um, using oh I didn't I must have missed this one from the beginning. We were talking about all the. The scary, beautiful charms, the lovely bird charm, eagle head, eagle skull charm. Uh, this eagle skull, LE 489. You know, I'm harping on the skulls. I don't want to do that. Golly, here's a, you know, it didn't really occur to me before, but we have quite a few of these Tree of Life. Uh, charms. Uh, this one also has um, some writing on the back. Or it's not writing, it's just texture on the back. Very cool. Anyway, that tree charm, LE420. Oh, 
Oh boy, I'm mixing things up now. Uh, and of course, hearts. You gotta have hearts. Right, here's a lovely open um, hollow heart where the, you know, the, the jump ring goes through uh, one of the loops, right? Dangles a little bit off center. Very cute. Uh, not super heavy, right? So it's pretty inexpensive. LE381 is your skew for that one. Um, and then we have a couple of other hearts. This one is solid close. I don't know if I can hold on to that without losing it. Um, oh boy. <laughs> right? I don't know if you can see that, right? It's, uh, you know, three dimensional. It's completely closed, but it's hollow, so it's not um, super heavy. Uh, relatively inexpensive. LE380 is your SKU for that. Um, and that's just a classic, you know, puffy heart, um, you know, thing. This is a good, uh, a good example of, um, you know, people will tell you that if you're soldering, um, you know, things like that, because uh, to make one of those, if you had uh, and it, you know, segue here a little bit into this. If you have something like a charm like this, right? So this is just a cute little heart charm. Uh, it's hollow, uh, uh, hollow, whatever. It's all one piece, right? Um, but I don't know if you can see, it's kind of domed, right? So it's flat if you put this against, uh, you know, the table. Um, but it's puffy. Right? It's, you know, bulged out. If you took two of those and soldered them together, you could get one like that, that other uh, thing. And people will tell you that you can't do that because um, when you try to solder, here's something that's kind of like in between, right? The same idea, right? If you try to solder these two things together, um, the gases that get trapped inside when it solders uh, we'll try to expand and it'll explode, um, which is just wrong. Don't listen to those people. <laughs> you don't have to drill a hole in it. One of the other people say you must drill a hole in there for the, to allow the gases to escape. Um, you, you know, uh, I'm not a big fan of people telling me what I can and can't do as far as jewelry. Not a big fan of uh, you must when you're making stuff. Um, you know, if you have an idea, try it. Here's a charm. I don't know what that is. 96, maybe? <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, but a it's a symbol, kind it, of symbol. <laughs> it is a kind of symbol, but it's very cool. LE020. Um, and uh, you could probably use this as a connector, too. Um, I like that. Yeah. Very symmetrical, which makes me happy. Um, here's one. I think we've only got one left of this. This is the last one of this. Um, and this is like, I don't know, that's right out of <laughs> uh, some fantasy movie. Um, right. A charm with that uh, lovely... A flowing script pattern. I don't think it, it actually means anything. Um, but again, this is, uh, you know, cast as three pieces. Um, the loop, the background, and then the foreground piece, and then they're all soldered together. Um, so a little more labor intensive than just a regular old thing. This, uh, the last one, get it while you, while you can. LE290 is the skew for that. Um, and uh, oh gosh, I don't want to forget we have a bunch of crosses too uh, and I'm already getting into uh, crap, I've already been an hour uh, 
So this gorgeous rose, look at that. That is super gorgeous. Again, this also uh, cast one, two, three pieces. Uh, each one of these sections of cups are separate and then have to be soldered together, right? Um, I don't care how good you are, you uh, you can't cast this all in one piece. It's just not it's not physically possible. Um, so I love this, uh, and that's a pretty big one. That's like almost forty millimeters long. Um, it says thirty nine by eighteen. L E two ninety five is your code for that. Um, God, I just love that. That that that's like a, you know, you could put that on a necklace as a statement piece, right? In, right in the center, right in the center of that. Um, put that there because of that. Um, oh my gosh, there are too many good ones. Uh, more feathers, more feathers. Uh, I'm gonna try to wrap it up now. Here's a. Let me show you a couple of crosses that we've got. Here's a lovely off center. Um, right, just very plain. Cross that off center cross. L E two eighty six. Is this you? Here's something a little more, a little more traditional, kind of gothic maybe. But uh, L E zero five six is that lovely cross charm. <laughs> uh, here's one. Very contemporary. Oops. Oh, got, looks like it got bent. Right. Very contemporary, right? All those pieces are all separate. Uh, LE285 is this. That's kind of cool, actually. Here's one, and I know this, I, boy, I can't remember the significance of this, but I know that it's a, it's a thing, uh, right? It's a, like an anchor with a snake going around that crucifix. I, I don't know what it is, like a, some Mariners thing, LE293, and not the Seattle Mariners, the baseball team, but the... the actual mariners this gorgeous um i think that's is that an uroboros right the snake eating its own tail gorgeous uh and hollow so it's not super heavy but it's pretty big um le301 is your code for that how many people knew that uh, that that symbol of a snake eating its own tail was called Ouroboros. <laughs> Probably y'all did. You guys are smart. If you're still watching, you're smart. <laughs> uh, here's another uh, very contemporary. God, that's gorgeous. Not a religious person myself, but golly, that's very cool. It looks like the kind of thing I would make um, if I were fabricating that stuff. I love that, um, you know, the frame on the outside of the basic uh, shape and then filling the insides i guess it's kind of like a filigree but it's not really filigree this um filigree concept anyway i think but just very cool those rococo stylings on the inside here's that last no not quite the last one. Oh, that's not a cross at all that is uh Oh golly, I can't remember the name of them. Uh, it's a thing. It looks like a door knocker, right? <laughs> um, oh, but there's a name for that thing. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, LE300 is your total. This is the last cross I'm going to show you. Oh, it's, of course it's in a bag. Uh, right. 
classic, very super, very traditional. LE058 is your code number. So, charms, crosses, we got them. Are there anything to call it? You know what? There's, um, just so you know, there are whole trays of other charms that uh, I've missed. Golly, some of these. Look at how cute this one is. That little dancer with the cubic zirconia, all right, the pave dress thing. God, just love that. But um, let me just do this because at this point I've gone over an hour. Um, right, so golly, there's just so many. Look at those money bags. Those are upside down. Those, they're money bags. Very cool. <laughs> uh, I love that snake. Look at that. Boy, there's just too many. Too many to do in a thing. I'm glad I made the decision to uh, uh, only do charms and not connect. Look, more feathers. Uh, fish. Look at the fish. Oh my god, there are flowers. Too many, too many things. Um, so, again, I'm sorry. I know I've gone over an hour. I said I would try to keep it under an hour, uh, but I failed again for the, what is this, the 15th, 16th uh, episode? 18. 18th episode. For the 18th episode, I failed at keeping it under an hour. <laughs> so, uh, um, I don't know. I think I'm just going to have to figure out something else um, to keep these uh, smaller. Um, if you have any questions, of course, I, you know you can always look on the website. Um, look under Charms. <laughs> it's just there. Uh, you can type in if you want uh, feathers. Type in feather in the search bar. You'll see tons of those charms with the, you know with the feathers. Um, you know anything like that. You know uh, you're of course uh, if you're in the local area, you're always welcome to come in and have a look at all the charms. There's literally hundreds that I haven't been able to show you. Um, you know so it's pretty rare that I mean everybody has their a concept in their mind everything. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if I had a charm that looked like this? And that thing that's in your mind, you'll almost never find exactly that thing unless you make it yourself. Uh, and we can help you with that. We can do the custom thing. Um, or we can find something that's, you know, probably close enough to <laughs> what you wanted uh, to make it work for you. Um, uh, and that's our goal. You know, to always have enough uh, things that are hopefully exactly what you want. Uh, or failing that close enough uh, that you're happy with it. And, uh, and that's our point. That's our whole reason for being here, uh, is to make you happy. <laughs> if nobody else is here to do that for you, uh, trust that we are. Um, so, I'm just going to... Um, yeah. Uh, next week, again, we'll do connectors. I think that'll be a little bit uh, smaller... Uh, section, although even when I'm thinking of that now, I'm thinking of all the connectors we have. Uh, I'm going to definitely keep it under an hour next week. I promise. I promise. <laughs> uh, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday, 1030. Again, uh, share the video. Uh, get your free uh, polishing cloth. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, you can email us uh, anytime uh, on the through the website. Um, Join us in the little chat uh, on the website, the TDO chat uh, thing. Uh, we're almost always there answering your questions. Um, there's so many ways to connect with us that uh, if you don't and you need to, it's because you're not trying. So try. <laughs> Please uh, connect with us. We're always here. We're here to answer your questions. Uh, it doesn't have to be about setting. It could be about anything jewelry related. Uh, and we'll either answer your questions or we'll make something up. 
uh, <laughs> or we'll figure out uh, what your question is and, and get it answered for you. Uh, so again, thanks for uh, joining us this week. We'll be back next Wednesday at 10.30 Pacific and all the other time zones, depending where you are. Um, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Okay.